When we talk about Fallout, we often come at it from the American perspective. Though I suppose it makes sense, right? The game is set in the States after all. But what about the other side of the Great War conflict? What about China? As we all know, China had agents and insurgents spread across pre-war America. But where exactly? Well, today let's go over the many Chinese installments that can be found throughout the Fallout franchise. This likely isn't all of them, as who but China knows where China is and has been, you know? With that being said, it's a good chunk of locations. Signal Sierra Romeo Let's start off with a bunch of smaller locations. These are the locations that have evidence of Chinese operations, but don't have a whole lot of lore regarding the area. If you venture in and around Vault 87, a strange radio broadcast might appear on your pip boy. Emitting from the nearby broadcast tower KT-8 is Signal Sierra Romeo. Consisting of an encrypted Morse code message, one can follow the signal strength to a manhole. Inside, and after finding a trap door, the corpses of two Chinese remnant soldiers can be found. Alongside them is a Chinese Army Spec Ops training manual, maybe indicating the level of expertise these soldiers had. Either way, at least two Chinese operatives seem to have been gathering intelligence in the western parts of the capital, Wasteland. I feel like I should also note, for transparency's sake, that there's another random encounter involving a radio and a dead Chinese commando. But I don't know, it's not really a sign of anything, you know? Like, where the heck did that guy even come from? Abandoned Apartments Found in Pittsburgh, aka The Pit, are a series of abandoned apartments. While the location is unmarked in the DLC, it contains one of my favorite easter eggs, as well as a unique hat. On the second floor of the complex is a room which housed a Chinese sympathizer. This is indicated by the several Chinese assault rifles and the unique hat of the people, which are locked in a safe in the room. The hat gives plus five to small guns. Within the same room, another Morse code message can be heard. When decrypted, the message spells a German phrase. I'm not even going to try to pronounce it, so it's this. The phrase is a partial quote from philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche's Beyond Good and Evil. The full quote you might have heard before would be, And if you stare too long into the abyss, the abyss will stare right back at you. The book contains many themes that relate to the Fallout universe. One notable quote from Beyond Good and Evil reads, The time for petty politics is past. The very next century will bring with it the struggle for mastery over the whole world. And with the resource wars seeing the destruction of many nations, and a power struggle between two global superpowers, I would argue that, at least in the Fallout universe, Nietzsche was right. That's enough philosophy for now. Old Oni Underground In order to craft Paladin Tristan's Tesla Cannon, a Tesla Coil is needed. The Lone Wanderer needs to travel to Olney Powerworks in order to acquire one. In doing so, they pass through the Old Oni Underground. Unfortunately, nothing is terribly notable about the Underground. Like Old Oni above, it's littered with Deathclaws, and there is a ghoul expedition that suffered many casualties. But other than that, it's mostly quiet. With that being said, there is evidence of Chinese operations. Two dead Chinese spies can be found next to a ham radio and some other supplies. It would seem that perhaps prior to the Deathclaw takeover of Old Oni, a couple foreign agents were the ones who were lurking underneath. SSN-371A this sort of subterranean espionage is actually quite on brand for Chinese intelligence agents. Even their ships were underground. Found off the coast of Point Lookout, Maryland, the SSN 371A submarine is a derelict Chinese ship that has run aground. This submarine and two other locations are key settings part of a Chinese espionage themed side quest. The Velvet Curtain is a Point Lookout side quest which sees the Lone Wanderer completing a mission on behalf of China 200 years after the fact. There are a few ways to start the quest, but all these starts will eventually lead you to a locker at Point Lookout's boardwalk. Inside, an auditory password for a safety deposit box can be found. Take that password to the People's Bank of Point Lookout, and you'll manage to unlock box 1207 where you'll find your espionage debriefing. It turns out that the US government managed to discover the Chinese sub and had plans to recover the vessel for any pertinent information. 
you know, the usual search and recovery type mission. It would be Agent Jiang's job to ensure this didn't happen. Ordered to rendezvous with another local spy, Jiang would have to collect the self-destruct codes and then head back to the safe house for extraction information. If you head to the safe house, room 1D of the Homestead Motel, you'll find out why Agent Jiang was unable to complete their mission. In the room, you'll find the skeletal remains of the agent. Jiang would never get the chance to complete their mission. Lucky for them though, the Lone Wanderer has a knack for helping people, even if they're 200 plus year old foreign agents. XP is XP, you know? So if you wish to complete this side quest, hop to it. We've got a spy to locate. Not too far from the bank is a naval recruiting center. On a terminal inside is a field report regarding the capture and transfer of a priority person of interest, Chinese intelligence field agent Wan Yang. Just what you're looking for. The document discloses that Yang has been taken to the not so nearby Turtle Dove detention camp for interrogation. Next stop, Turtle Dove. You can sneak your way in, or just go guns a blazin'. Either works, though maybe sneaking would have been better. Once inside, locate the interrogation reports on the camp's terminal. It notes that Yang was killed during the interrogation and her remains can be found in locker TD-0181 in the base's morgue. Alternatively, just follow the quest marker to the morgue instead. Locate the morgue, locate the locker, and locate the submarine self-destruct codes. Like a post-nuclear James Bond, eh? With the codes in hand, the only thing left to do is to blow up SSN-371A. Southwest of the Calvert Mansion, the sub can be found. Hop in through a hatch, punch in the codes onto a terminal, pull a lever, and swim away. The captured vessel is no more. But this spy sub isn't the only spy stronghold within Maryland. The Chinese spy network goes all the way to the top. Chinese Intelligence Bunker Once the submarine is destroyed, you're to return to Agent Jiang's room at the Homestead Motel. There you're given further instructions. Locate a pair of cryptochromatic spectacles within the toilet tank of the motel room and report to the personal bunker of someone. The coordinates given to you puts the bunker underneath a greenhouse slash aviary slash atrium next to the Calvert Mansion. It would appear that the Calvert family were Chinese spies, or at the very least, sympathizers. I mean, how else would a Chinese intelligence bunker be underneath your home without you knowing, you know? Surely the homeowner would discover something like that, right? Now, as you might have expected of a family who owns a mansion, the Calverts were not ordinary people. In fact, they were one of the most powerful families in not only Maryland, but the entire United States. According to Desmond Lockhart, the Calverts owned half of Maryland, back when there was a Maryland to own. Members of the Calvert family were influential all over the world. They practically owned a deed to the US government. In their best days, there were no less than three Calvert family senators, seven members of the house, and two governors. He goes on to say that they even had a top candidate for president. The Calverts were an immensely powerful family in pre-war America. It just turns out that they were also hosting Chinese intelligence agents in their secret basement. The bunker is the final setting for the Velvet Curtain side quest. The location is home to numerous ammunition boxes, several Chinese assault rifles, and the unique lever action rifle known as the backwater rifle. A terminal within the bunker contains Agent Jiang's final extraction orders. The entry thanks you for completing your assigned mission, tells you that your payment has been wired to your next of kin, and advises you to go with dignity. As you finish reading, the room starts to fill with a lethal amount of radiation. The velvet curtain turned out to be a suicide mission, and you didn't even know it. Though, as the protagonist of a video game, I'm sure you'll find a way out. Honestly, in making this video, I didn't expect there to be so much Fallout 3. I of course expected Point Lookout, but completely forgot about Broken Steel and The Pit. With that being said, Fallout 3 isn't the only game that features Chinese operations on American soil. Yangtze Submarine In 2287, across the shallow waters of the Boston Harbor, a young boy, Donnie Kowalski, looks out. In the haze of the early morning fog and among the many wrecked ships, the boy sees what he believes to be a sea monster. Is it Codzilla? Boston's wildest cruise, perhaps? No. It turns out that it's actually an incapacitated Chinese Yangtze-class nuclear submarine, the Yangtze-31. Get your diving goggles, we're going swimming. Might I just add that water in video games is terrifying? Why is it always so scary? 
Anyways, a quick swim towards the sea beast reveals that what little Donnie was seeing was no monster, but rather the vessel's periscope. Pop open the hatch, climb down, and you're greeted by the ship's captain, People's Liberation Army Captain Zhao. Partly astonished by the sight of another human, Zhao explains that the Yangtze 31 was one of several nuclear submarines deployed to America's coastal waters. Even after 200 years, Zhao remembers following orders and launching his payload with some regret. It was his submarine that was responsible for the destruction caused to the Commonwealth. Shortly after the Great War, his sub came into contact with a naval mine, damaging the ship's nuclear reactor. The radiation that would leak out would turn Zhao and his comrades into ghoulified versions of themselves. Over time, the rest of his crew, including his first mate, would turn feral. For two centuries, Zhao would live alongside his ghoulish friends, gathering technologies and information with the hopes of one day returning to his homeland. It would be Zhao's chance encounter with the sole survivor where these hopes would turn into realities. Zhao tasks the sole survivor with retrieving a dampening coil from Saugus Ironworks, a relatively simple job for the hardened wastelander. Once acquired, the Yangtze will then need a new source of nuclear fuel. Great news, it's aboard the sub in the form of an unrefined nuclear warhead. Bad news, the sub is crawling with the vessel's former crew members. They'll need to be dealt with. Upon acquiring the warhead, Zhao then instructs the sole survivor to install the dampening coil and then the warhead, in that exact order. With the Yangtze ready to operate once again, Zhao finally gets the chance to head back home to China, though he never ends up leaving during the game. In my opinion, the Yangtze submarine is one of the coolest locations in Fallout 4, a pre-war Chinese nuclear sub that was responsible for destroying Boston. It's an epic set piece reserved for one of the more intriguing side quests in Fallout 4. The unfortunate bit is that more was planned for this quest chain. It would actually be Zhao and the sole survivor who would take the Yangtze to the cut content underwater vault 120. Still, it's a Nido Benito location. While the two Chinese submarines found in Fallout are intentionally hidden, secretly operating in the Atlantic Ocean's depths, some Chinese intelligence locations were simply hiding in plain sight. Mama Dolce's Mama Dolce's was a pre-war packaged food manufacturing company. They were a popular all-American business touting great American food, like their sweet and sour stroganoff, for example. In reality, however, Mama Dolce's was a front for Chinese intelligence operations. And with two known locations across the East Coast, it would seem that they were quite good at their work, both espionage and making packaged food. The Capital Wasteland location housed and kept safe a significant number of special ops troopers. 200 years later, by the start of Fallout 3, the building is swarming with ghoulified Chinese remnants. The leader of them, a captain, carries an encryption key for the building's terminal. Welcome Agent Huang. The Republic people of China salute your braveries. Find established cover operation of Mama Dolce Food Creation Factory. Priority to rendezvous with selected team in covert operations of local area. Job and wage are secured for each within cover operation. Required to inform when first stage of operation is completed. Mama Dolce's would import agents of China, employ them at the factory in an elaborate cover, and would eventually plan to use these forces as guerrilla troopers during an attack on the continental United States. Now, the location in Appalachia hid a much bigger secret. Not only was the location housing Chinese operatives, but underneath the Mama Dolce's food processing plant was the Fujinaya intelligence base. If the Vault Dweller from 76 takes a stroll into an intake pipe, they will find a locked door. Using the factory manager's keycard, they're able to access the top secret base. There, they learn of the base's objectives. Like the Capital Wasteland's Mama Dolce's, this Mama Dolce's was importing arms for an anticipated attack on American soil. Prior to the Great War, they managed to stockpile 75 assault rifles, over 1,200 units of ammunition, and 30 officers' swords. They were preparing for an attack, but that wasn't all. At first, the intelligence base was conducting a mission called Operation Trinitite. They were tasked with gathering intelligence and locating rumored nuclear silos across West Virginia. And to the surprise of some, they did manage to discover these silos. China knew that Appalachia had nukes. But what was strange was that they hardly saw visitors come and go from these alleged nuclear sites. This was strange. Surely people would be operating these sites and then go home at night and so forth. Shifts needed to be rotated, right? 
It got to the point where Chinese operatives began to question if these supposed sites were merely decoys. And so the Fujinaya intelligence base changed their goal. They shelved Operation Trinitite and started on something new. The base would expand, creating new laboratories. The base would go from nuclear intelligence gathering to stealth and robotics research and development. The stealth side of things ran into quite a few problems with the primary being the acquisition of necessary advanced components. Like, really, how are you supposed to smuggle high-tech components into a food factory, you know? The robotics side had much more success. Small crawler-type robots called Liberators were developed as a sort of support bot for a potential Chinese invasion. Equipped with a laser weapon and sharpened spinning blades, these bots, while not made for mass destruction, could still render some foes incapable of fighting. And that was sort of the fate of the intelligence base until the Great War, part stealth research and part Liberator assembly line. The dropping of the nuclear bombs on America caught the agents at the intelligence base by surprise. Even worse, their communication network with the homeland was cut off. The agents underneath Mama Dolce's were alone. Some abandoned their cause and fled the base, and presumably attempted to blend in with the fellow Great War survivors. Those that didn't leave stayed with the base's director and attempted to continue work in whatever capacity they could. But this is not where the story of the Fujinia intelligence base ends. Following the Great War, there were some members at the upper echelons of government that were part of a secret shadow government, the Enclave. Now, the Appalachian division of the Enclave, even after the Great War, were not done. They wanted to continue the fight. To do so, they needed nukes. The Appalachian automated launch system, three missile silos across the region, would be the nukes that they needed. But as part of the system's defense mechanisms, in order to access these nuclear missiles, the region needed to be at a maximum DEFCON status. The Enclave, led by Thomas Eckhart, needed to do something to raise the region's DEFCON status, and so he sent scouts to scour the area looking for ways to, essentially, raise hell. One of the Enclave's top agents, Agent Jefferson Gray, managed to discover the Chinese intelligence base underneath Mama Dolce's, and so Gray and other Enclave troops stormed the facility, executing the remaining Chinese agents. Fujinaya, now under Enclave control, would release the Liberator bots onto the land, hoping this would be enough to access the nukes. What the Enclave didn't know, however, was that Mama Dolce's and Fujinia was not China's only base of operations in Appalachia. The Motherload Acquisition Facility Situated underground near the Summersville Lake inside of a massive cavern is an advanced Chinese compound known as the Motherload Acquisition Facility. The goal of this base is, unsurprisingly, in the name. It would be here that Chinese forces would attempt to commandeer Hornwright Industrial's series of motherload mining robots. The motherload was this massive, earth-moving tunneling bot used to boost the efficiency of the company's many mining projects. Instead of having to use human workers to carve out tunnels and such, the motherload bots would do it for them. Quite useful, I'd say. China thought so too. The team located at the motherload acquisition facility managed to acquire a motherload robot. It would be through using this state-of-the-art mining bot that China would commence their Appalachian tunneling efforts. While the exact motives behind China's tunneling operation are unknown, a terminal within the facility reveals that the insurgents managed to create a network consisting of five tunnels across the region. Tunnel 1 was in the North Mountains, near Hopewell Cave. Tunnel 2 was in the East Mountains, near Fort Atlas. Tunnel 3 was in the South Mountains, near Dent and Sons Construction. Tunnel 4 was in the Mire, near Freddy Fear's House of Scares and the fifth tunnel was actually still in progress. I'd wager that these tunnels would be used for rapid response units to swiftly navigate the mountainous regions. This would be especially true in the event of a guerrilla attack on the continental United States. Through the events of the Invisible Ties Settler's main quest, the Vault Dweller from 76 winds up discovering the Chinese compound. This security breach is broadcast across the base. A notice to all personnel can be found on a terminal. To all personnel, initiate facility data wipe procedures. American infiltration detected. Proceed with Operation Piercing Viper. While I'm unsure what Operation Piercing Viper actually is, it would seem that the work done at the facility was so confidential that a breach by a lone wastelander warranted a full facility data wipe. Though I suppose it doesn't really matter much, as the Vault Dweller commits a full facility wipe themselves, deleting the hostile Chinese remnant forces. Upon dispatching the base's power armor clad commander, they receive a key that leads to where the motherload is kept. 
The Vault Dweller is then free to use the bot for transportation through the tunnel system and makes use of it during the Vault 79 heist. What was once a top secret and secluded Chinese stronghold is brought to ruins by the Vault Dweller from 76. Bonus, the Shi Wang Ti. Before we conclude this video, I just want to mention a little bonus. I don't really know if it fits, but I know that if I don't mention the Shi, I'll probably get a lot of comments about it. So let's talk a bit about them. It wasn't only the Atlantic coast that had stealth submarines roaming about at the time of the Great War. On the west coast, the Pacific, there was at least one known Chinese sub, the Shi Wang Ti. When the bombs dropped, the systems of the nuclear sub stopped working. Those aboard were left floating in the dark with no way to control the vessel. After some time, they ran aground on the shores of San Francisco. Using the brains and technology that were aboard the sub, they managed to recreate a powerful but reclusive society. And this is what I mean when I say they're a bonus. Sure, they were aboard a former Chinese nuclear sub, but they weren't really on American soil until post-war, you know? Anywho, that is what, like, eight or nine pre-war Chinese bases, strongholds, and outposts that were operating on American soil during the lead-up to the Great War. Locations that housed foreign agents as part of China's advanced intelligence operations during the universe's most significant conflict. And while many of these operations may have been thwarted pre- or post-Great War, who knows how many more are out there. Thanks for listening. If you liked the video, be sure to share and subscribe. Have a good rest of your day. Cheers. 200 years ago, I launched all of Yang Zi's high-yield nuclear missiles, as ordered. For 200 years, I have lived with that guilt, that shame. So much fire, such pain.